breaking, 60 shot, 9 dead dash hospital inundated with patients. Did the purges begin? Is America war zone? Looking at Chicago one might be convinced. It has been 1,256 days since the city of Chicago had a single day free of SH owning and or homicides. That translates to nearly three and a half years, that is three and a half years worth of daily, nightly, sometimes even hourly firearm violence in a city noted for some of the strictest firearm control laws in the nation. The beleaguered populace of Chicago is denied the basic right to defend themselves against the rampant firearm violence taking place in their neighborhoods and their city streets while they attempt to fight poverty and joblessness in a city riddled with debt, high crime, rampant gang violence. Yet Mayor Rahm Emanuel continues to advocate for illegal aliens over the citizens of Chicago. In spite of the ruling of McDonald v. The city of Chicago rending the anti-GN laws of the city unconstitutional, Emanuel and other city leaders continue to mire the citizens of Chicago in bureaucracy that virtually renders the ruling void in actual practice. This weekend was an especially bloody one with 47 people being shot just on Sunday, six of them fatally. The Chicago Tribune reports dash. At least 74 people were shot in one of the most violent weekends of the year in Chicago, spurred by a seven-hour period early Sunday morning when 40 people were shot. Between 3 p.m. Friday and 6 a.m. Monday morning, 11 people were KD and 63 were wounded, according to Tribune data. Their ages spanned from 11 to 62 years old, and most of those shot were attacked on the south and west sides. As of Friday, at least 1,700 people have been shot in the city this year, fewer than the last two years at this time when violence hit record levels in the city but well above other recent years. There have been at least 300 homicides, according to Tribune data. Six of the shootings this weekend injured four or more people in a single attack, racking up 31 victims early Sunday. The staggering numbers attracted national media attention and resulted in a press conference Sunday morning during which Chicago Police Chief of Patrol Fred Waller blamed the violence on gang members who shoot into summer crowds at night. They take advantage of that opportunity and they shoot into a crowd, no matter who they hit, Waller said. Over the weekend, shooters targeted large groups at a block party, a funeral and other outdoor gatherings. The largest attack wounded eight people in the South Side's Gresham neighborhood around 12.40 a.m. Monday, including a 14-year-old girl and two 17-year-old girls. Two 17-year-old shot in separate incidents were the weekend's youngest homicide victims. Janny Patterson was KD in an attack in the West Side's Longdale neighborhood that wounded another five people around 2.35 a.m. Sunday, including an 11-year-old boy. She was shot in the face and pronounced DD on scene, police said. Kenny Ivory was shot in KD while he rode his bike on the south side on Sunday afternoon, police said. He was on his bike around 4.15 p.m. in the 7600 block of South Union Avenue in the Gresham neighborhood when he got into an argument with other males on bikes, police said. When will President Donald Trump send in the feds to fix Mayor Ram Emanuel's failures? Just over a year ago President Trump tweeted, Crime and killings in Chicago have reached such epidemic proportions that I am sending in federal help. 1714 shootings in Chicago this year. He was widely criticized by the left and the mainstream media for stating what is patently obvious to anyone willing to look at the facts. In fact, last June following President Trump's tweet, Police Superintendent Eddie Johnson said in response dash, if you have a magic bullet to stop the violence anywhere, not just in Chicago but in America, then please, share it with us. More than just a new strategy or tactic, we are foundationally changing the way we fight crime in Chicago. This new strike force will significantly help our police officers stem the flow of illegal GS and create a culture of accountability for the small subset of individuals and gangs who disproportionately drive violence in our city. Except the numbers have not improved, and in fact have only got worse since then. According to a Newsweek report from 2016, roughly 90% of GN violence in Chicago flows from gangs, 
while a 2017 Chicago Tribune report notes that while the vast majority of GN owners say they legally obtained their GS, the same is not true for criminals, however, most of whom obtained their GS illegally, and thus would remain unaffected by common sense GN laws. Meanwhile, the tone deaf leadership in Chicago continues to call for. Don't you guessed it? Common sense GN laws. Newsweek reports, Chicago's modern history of gang violence, especially on its west and south sides, goes back to the 1960s. But over the past year, two things have accelerated the attacks, according to social workers and law enforcement authorities. Budget cuts reduced the number of anti-violence social workers who once cooled the simmering feuds, and a series of deadly police shootings and alleged misconduct by police have torpedoed the relationship between cops and residents. Note from the editor, the views and opinions expressed in this article are those of the authors and do not necessarily reflect the position of this website or of the owners, administrators of where this article is shared online. Claims made in this piece are based on the author's own opinion and not stated as evidence or fact.